Hey everyone, I'm Ken Klippenstein with Breaking Points, The Intercept Edition. Uh, I did a story recently that I'd like to talk to you all about. Let's talk about Havana Syndrome, or as the US government calls it, um, the anomalous health conditions. That's the new official term. You don't use the word Havana Syndrome for it anymore. Um, what Havana Syndrome refers to is a set of alleged symptoms um, alleged by US spies, diplomats, and other personnel at various US embassies um, that they say resemble um, you know, hearing strange noises, cognitive issues, headaches, nausea. It's a really mysterious uh, set of symptoms, and um, over a thousand of these individuals have alleged this. And so I took a look at the uh, Pentagon budget, which was released last month. To my surprise, nobody had reported um, one thing that was in it, which was the budget for responding to Havana Syndrome. That's $36 million. That's a budget that's been increasing every year since um, they first allocated money to this. And something I find interesting about um, the government response to Havana Syndrome is how bipartisan it is. At a time that it seems we can't get uh, folks in government to agree on anything, I mean, they're debating now cutting um, food stamps, uh, subsidies to clean energy, um, you know, potentially sending the government into default if, if you believe some of the more extreme members of the um, Republican caucus something that they universally agreed on. Every single senator, every single representative of Congress um, two years ago was to fund a response to um, the so-called Havana syndrome, an, or rather anomalous health incidents. I'm sorry, I have to use our proper verbiage here. Um, and so what's interesting about that is not only did they authorize that funding a couple years ago, it continues to increase every year. So let's talk about what exactly that $36 million entails. It's not just healthcare treatment for the individual's affected, it's also R&D, research into um, what the conditions are that, that you know, might lead somebody to be susceptible to this, how to respond to it. And as Politico, the budget's not terribly detailed about what that all entails, but as Politico reported a couple weeks ago, the military is experimenting with different weapon systems to try to um, see if they can induce uh, uh, the, the conditions that would cause what they believe to be Havana syndrome. Now, something I think that's really important to address in all of this is that it's not clear what Havana syndrome is exactly. There's all sorts of disagreement over, you know, um, what, what constitutes it. And if you look at um, the CIA interim study that was released last year um, that spent, you know, all sorts of resources investigating this, uh, again, they had about a thousand, a little over a thousand people saying that they had it. They were able to rule out the majority of those cases as um, in having environmental causes, pre-existing health conditions, so on and so forth. Now, I don't think it's bad to respond. I mean, even if something is psychiatric, that's still something that you can respond to and provide health care for. But the manner in which they're approaching this, uh, as you recall, when it first came out, Havana Syndrome, the title refers to um, the US Embassy in Cuba, where uh, diplomats and spies first started alleging these symptoms. But since then, um, these symptoms were reported all over the world, embassies all over the world, China, Russia. So, I mean, there's like over a dozen of them. And what's interesting, you know, I do a lot of work in national security. Interviewing folks in that space, I realized when I, st I started asking them almost immediately, I said, you know, what is this? What are you hearing? Because very often, even when stuff is highly classified, things, you know, word gets around. It's very hard to keep a secret. People will hear things from, retired people will hear things from people inside. People inside might talk to you and tell you what, they, what they're hearing about it. And what was amazing was the range of opinions that I was able to solicit when I asked folks this, this question. It seemed almost like a Rorschach test. It was like the people I knew that worked counterintelligence on Russia, they're like, it's gotta be the Russians, it's a Russian energy weapon. The people working counterintelligence against the Chinese, it's gotta be Beijing, they're doing this to us for X, Y, and Z reason. Um, other people said it was Cuba. And you know, these, I mean, these are obviously probably private conversations that I had, but if you look back at the media coverage initially, it was taken very seriously that this must be some kind of directed energy um, weapon and a lot of people pointed the finger at the Russians, but what that CIA interim report that I mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago found was that um, it's unlikely that uh, there was a foreign adversary. And just a couple weeks ago, a conclusive um, multi-agency intelligence community assessment reiterated that in greater detail, finding that it was, quote, highly unlikely um, that it's a, a foreign adversary doing this. So they've just tossed out this idea that it's a direct energy weapon, um, not much, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, reflection on the part of the press about why did we run with this before? <laughs> you know, when they were running these stories, I thought, wow, they're really 
um, throwing their lot in with this theory that if it turns out not to be true, they're going to have egg on their face. Turns out if you just don't talk about it, there won't be any egg on your face. So there's just been this complete shift now where it's like, well, it's not a foreign adversary. Um, and, you know, people can say, well, this is the intelligence community's assessment. How do we trust that that's true? I have a feeling that if they find something derogatory about um, the uh, you know nation state adversaries on which their budget and, and money and resources and really reason for existing depends, I have a feeling they're going to release that. So I don't think they're going to be particularly shy about it. Um, but in any case, what was most astonishing uh, in this Pentagon budget to me, um, not just the amount, $36 million, but but the spending on R&D, as I mentioned, the political report, they're experimenting with their own weapon systems to try to create conditions that they think might lead to... Havana um, syndrome is just how sophisticated this response that continues to, it's just classic national security. You allocate money to something and it never disappears. Even after this conclusive report that found that it can't have been, it, very unlikely to have been caused by a, by a foreign adversary. What I found is um, it's not just the military that's doing this. Although the Pentagon budget, I think the Pentagon takes point because they have the healthcare resources um, in place to, to most effectively respond to this, they're, they're responding in conjunction with a bunch of different agencies. This task force they have that's responding to it has more than doubled in size um, since its inception, um, which was just a, only just a couple of years ago. If you read an um, inspector general report that the um, Pentagon put out last year, they found that not only has that staff doubled, it includes a two-star military general to give you a sense of like how seriously they're, they're taking this, who's, who's detailed. Um, and a bunch of full-time staff. So these are not just people working on the side occasionally to, to work on this task force. It's something that the military is taking very seriously with regard to not just money, but the, the seniority of the individuals um, uh, detailed, detailed to this uh, task force. And in addition to that, it's people from all sorts of different service branches, Air Force, um, uh, military police, Marine Corps. It, it, so it's astonishing the size of this response is something that we still don't know, A, what it is, and B, if, it, if there is even a what there, if, it even, if it's something that's not just psychogenic. Um, you know, when I interviewed folks uh, who worked at the CIA, the impression I got was such an American story. It was like I heard um, the same kinds of distrust for their internal medical system that you hear from folks in this, just ordinary everyday people. I don't trust the healthcare system, and I understand that, but that should precipitate a different kind of response than this mad dash to find out about the secret weapon that, that you know, they've developed out of a Bond movie uh, uh, versus, you know, uh, again, I, if it's just psychiatric, I, I still think that's something that's reasonable to respond to, but does it require this whole regime that we've set up, not just within the military service branches, but with the State Department as well? I um, had a document leaked to me last year um, showing that the Department of Homeland Security was trying to solicit uh, reports from their personnel on whether or not they'd experienced any of these symptoms. So what you're seeing is just this huge multi-government dash. And we only know about the Pentagon side of the budget. We don't know about the classified um, intelligence community budget, which is a black budget, um, which is likely, you know, includes at least a bit more money, if not a lot more. And so I just like to see some debate on this issue about which there seems to be total partisan, there is total partisan agreement. Again, every single member voted for that funding two years ago, um, but which the public isn't aware of, and that's not their fault. The government has not talked about these things. There was no press release for this $36 million budget. There's no discussion by the um, press secretary. I only found it because I went through the, you know, over thousands of page budget to just look for it. And I just searched for the term um, anomalous health incidents, knowing that that's what the government called it, and, and, and found this. And so I'd, uh, that's really what I want to bring this to your guys' attention. I hope that there's some discussion on this on the part of committees, because again, we're talking about f cutting all sorts of domestic programs because of the debt. And what is the one thing you never hear about? Cutting the Pentagon. That's something that is explicitly off the table that um, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has said will not be something that's subjected to cuts. And that's incredible, because virtually everything else is. That's not to say they will cut everything else, but the idea is they're open to the you know, discussing that, putting that on the table, and, and, and having that be a part of the negotiations. Um, so I'll be here, as always, paying attention to what the Pentagon is doing and what they're not uh, telling you guys about it. Uh, but thanks so much for joining me. Once again, I'm Ken Klippenstein with uh, Breaking Points, The Intercept Edition.